Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. Today we're going to talk about one of the most exciting signature Stratocasters that Fender did this year, the Tom Morello Soul Power. So just in case you're not familiar with who Tom Morello is, Tom is a Harvard graduate, but he's also one of the most creative guitarists of all time through his unique use of effects and playing techniques. When he was first hired to be in the band Rage Against the Machine, he wasn't actually hired to be a guitarist, he was hired to be the band's DJ. So he was always trying to find ways to think outside of the box and how to play the guitar differently. I mean, this guy plays the guitar cable sometimes even to get some of the cool sounds. And I first found out about this guy through Guitar Hero 3. And I can honestly say, Tom Morello, if you're watching this, you are the reason why I bought all these pedals. My 14th birthday, I got a wah pedal so I could do the Bulls on Parade riff. Slightly after that, I had to get a Digitech Whammy pedal in order to do the solo. Now, as far as the Boss DD3 Digital Delay, I'm not sure who to give that one credit to. It was either Tom or Buckethead, but this one might go to Buckethead due to Big Sur Moon. But if this doesn't represent Guitar Hero 3 really well, nothing will. But besides his work with Rage Against the Machine, I mean, he's done a bunch of other stuff as well. There's things like the Night Watchmen, but the one I always think of is Audio Slave. It's essentially all the same band members from Rage Against the Machine, but instead of Zach De La Rocha being the singer, you've got Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. He's like one of my favorite singers. So this is an awesome super group, and I definitely suggest checking out their song, Like a Stone. So whether or not you agree with Tom's political side or if a signature guitar of his should have ever been made and sold to the mass public as a corporation, uh, that, I'm not here to talk about that today. I'm just happy that soul power exists because that's kind of the other really cool thing to me about Tom Morello is he has these really signature guitars that you can easily identify him by. To me, the number one Tom Morello guitar is called Arm the Homeless. Did you guys know that those little white blotches are hippos? <laughs> I never knew that until I was looking into this. I always just thought they were like little white clouds as decorations. Well, that's kind of a, a cool guitar, but it's a parts caster. It was never an official Fender product. But his other big one is this one. It says Soul Power. It, well, it's supposed to say it right here anyways. A little bit more of that here in a minute. But essentially the story of this guitar goes, he was moving from Rage Against the Machine to Audio Slave, so he needed something, you know, slightly less political on his guitar and just something to start something new. And he needed a model to redefine his identity. So he went to Guitar Center, he picked this thing up off the shelf, he went home, he didn't really think too much about it, he just took a marker and wrote Soul Power on it. Because that's what he felt working with Chris Cornell and all the other guys, there was a lot of soul going on there. But yeah, that's right. His original Soul Power guitar is just a Guitar Center exclusive that's based on the Aerodyne Stratocaster. So basically an Aerodyne Strat, what makes them interesting is they have the matching headstock finish. They have binding along them. Notice you actually lose that comfort carve up here because of that, but you still have that one on the back. And I believe most of those were made in Japan guitars. But if I'm understanding things correctly, his is not actually an Aerodyne because his doesn't say Aerodyne at the ball end of the headstock, it was just blank. It's believed to be a designer series American Deluxe Stratocaster. Here you can see one of those. You can see the mirror pick guard, you've got the Tele style knobs. Almost everything looks the same, even down to the pickups, except for the one that he changed, except for the Floyd Rose. So I'm not sure if he modified his or if there were separate runs here. It's really hard to find information out about his original one, but here you can see the headstock is also matching and does not have the Aerodyne labeling. And this was a USA run guitar with locking tuners. So that was definitely fun to learn about because I had never knew the story behind Soul Power. So not a lot of thinking behind it, but definitely a very cool number two guitar for Tom Morello. Besides what we've already talked about, what makes this guitar special, you get the mirror pick guard. You have a Floyd Rose in here, which a Stratocaster does not normally have. Usually it's just the synchronized tremolo system. You actually have a kill switch here. Now it's not like a, a bucket head kill switch because these are an arcade button. You can actually press them really fast and get some cool stutter effects. This is just a regular toggle switch that has your sound on and off. You can toggle in between. So instead of super fast tapping stuff where you can even double tap it, 
you're just left doing this. And that works really well for Tom Morello's style. In fact, the video that he did with Fender, if you want to see what Tom Morello is capable of, just watch that video. I'm not gonna be able to recreate all those sounds. But that's the beautiful thing about Tom Morello's songs and why it was a great choice for Guitar Hero to put him in there. Because as somebody who learned guitar because of Guitar Hero, he was a great guy to first look up to because the solos, they're not necessarily hard to learn. You just have to have the right pedals in order to do it and then figure out how he's doing it and then just kind of sound it out and then go, wow, this guy is really imaginative. So now that we understand this guitar a little bit better, what are my first impressions of this thing? I mean, first off, a really cool color scheme. I'm digging this. The binding really sets off this black strat, which makes it look really cool. It almost looks like it has an ebony fretboard, but it's not. And the matching headstock, the whole vibe of this with the shiny chrome everywhere, it's really working for me. Now, I'm really not looking forward to taking the film off the pick guard, because then it's gonna be fingerprint city, but I gotta say, Fender did a huge disservice on this guitar by not putting soul power stock from the factory. Here's what they did instead. They provide you with a large decal that you can install yourself, and they give you instructions within the case. Mine accidentally got sent without this, so I had to have Fender send me another one. So we'll go ahead and put that on the guitar on the workbench, but it, it just should have been under the clear coat in my opinion. But I understand why they did it the way they did. They didn't want to alienate anybody who just happened to want this guitar based on its specs, didn't really want writing on it, or cared about the Tom Morello influence, because, I mean, this thing is crazy crazily specked out. But instead of the decal, what they should have done is given you a stencil and a white slash silverish marker so you could do it yourself because the original Soul Power is done up in marker. So I think that would have been even cooler to have like a Tom Morello signature <laughs> marker. <laughs> So at least we have some way to put soul power on it that's official. But the next thing that kind of made me sad when these were first released is they're made in Mexico. So I was kind of hoping we'd have a USA release, maybe even a custom shop version of this. But when you think about it, the price of these are actually $12.99. That's not half bad for a signature guitar. And you're really not paying a bunch for Tom Morello's name on this. I mean, I mean yeah, $12.99 is expensive for a Mexican Fender. But these things are so wickedly specced. I mean, you don't have like a cheap Floyd Rose special in here. You actually have something halfway decent. You have Fender noiseless pickups. And you get a Seymour Duncan humbucker in the bridge. So even though it's a SSS style, it's actually an HSS. And on top of that, you even get locking tuners on this guy, which is a bit overkill, but we'll talk about that later. There's just so much to this guitar spec-wise. I honestly think it's not atrociously overpriced for exactly what it is. But the only thing that's really killing this guitar for me is the neck profile. I do not like it at all. If you are a thumb wrapper, you're gonna hate this neck. It's got a slim neck profile to it, but the edges are super sharp. It's a really wide feeling neck, so it's uncomfortable if you like to rap, but if you're playing properly, I can see how this would be a dream guitar to play. I would have preferred a little bit more of a rolled edge, but I mean, if that's the worst thing I can say about this guitar, I think we're gonna be okay. That all comes down to personal preference. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench, learn a little bit more about its specs and details, and then we will get to a playing demo. Inside Soul Power, what do we got? Underneath the pick guard, it's actually routed for two humbuckers and a single coil. So hey, if you wanna modify your signature guitar even further, that is an option if you want to. And you can see the identifying barcode right there and everything is shielded off in here, including the little cavities right here. And this is an alder body. It looks like you can see through to that right there. But now let's take a look at the original pickups. So we have vintage noiseless single coils right here in the neck and middle, but what he did to his original one, he changed that bridge pickup out. It's actually a humbucker as we were talking about earlier. This is a Seymour Duncan Hot Rails pickup. And it looks like that's all wired up to 250K pots and everything else here is pretty much the same. But where's our kill switch? It's right here. So it's kind of just like a three-way toggle switch for a Les Paul. It actually does have three positions. Traditional middle position, that's off. The neck is off. It's only the bridge when this thing is actually even on. And in order to accommodate that kill switch, you can tell that they had to do some additional routing in here. So that's kind of interesting to see on a Stratocaster. And that little circle there, I think that's just what the Mexican-made ones do. It helps people to identify the bodies. But there's also a barcode on the back. It just says Tom Morello Stratocaster. And yes, even the backside is a mirror, which is kind of interesting. So this is actually a metal pick guard. 
because if it was a mirror, it would actually have like a flat back paint on here. But as far as pickup readings go here, our neck pickup reads 9.83. These two together, about five. Just the middle, 9.77. These two together, six. And just the bridge, that's wow. 14.97, that is hot. But the toggle switch is just doing the same thing that normal Stratocasters do. And once again, the Tele style domed knobs. That was something that was just original on his guitar. It matches with the whole mirror pick guard vibe. And your output jack is located on the front and that's what your cavity looks like. I hope you guys appreciated being able to see that because man, I, I just know I'm gonna have a hard time getting this Floyd Rose back together. But the model of Floyd that they put in here is a pretty decent one. It is called the Floyd Rose FRT-02000. I'm not a Floyd Rose expert, but it's definitely a higher end one than the Floyd Rose special that came on the HM strap. Those are pretty much about the same price. But this is a double locking system. So it locks right here on the strings, but it also locks up here with a locking nut. But what makes this guitar really crazy is you actually have locking tuners on here too. At first thought, when I saw that, it's like, uh, isn't that like way overkill? Because anything after this point doesn't really make sense. That's just for ease of stringing. And the original designer series limited run had locking tuners. But now it's time to allow all of the fingerprints to happen. This stuff's always the worst to get off because like it works pretty okay until you get to the knobs and stuff. They really should think of a better way to do this. And now we'll take one last look at this thing before it becomes the signature Tom Morello Stratocaster. We've got to get that soul power decal on here. But it is a bound body as we were talking about before. So you do not have the comfort cut right here, which some people might not like. It'll be interesting to get to try that. But it definitely, you know, helps it make it look fancy. It'd be kind of cool if they would have done like a mirror binding. Maybe that would have been too much. But this guitar definitely has a very metallic, almost like Daft Punk vibe to it right now. But let's go ahead and do the deed. I was a little bit worried how that was gonna turn out, but now that I see it in person, they did an excellent job in making that actually look like handwriting like his. Because the decal, it really did look like block letters, but, but the way that they cut out those letters actually made it look like handwriting. So that's actually pretty impressive how they did that. I didn't know if it was gonna turn out real well or not, but I did not have any issues installing that. But if you're gonna buy one of these from a dealer, make the dealer do the hard work. <laughs> I'm sure if you mess up, Fender would send you another one. I don't know about you guys, but this guitar is now 80% more attractive to me. I'm sure some people think I've ruined it, but if it's gonna be a signature guitar, it needs to say that. So moving on to the neck here, this is the only thing I don't like about this guitar is the edges of the neck feel really sharp, but it's got a rosewood fretboard with 22 frets and it's actually utilizing a compound radius. So it starts at nine and a half and then it flattens up to 14 up here. Now I believe that might actually be something he did different on this one to make the guitar better for him. Because the spec sheets that I found on the original version of this just said nine and a half, but maybe that dealer had the specs wrong, who knows. And the only thing QC wise that I'm seeing here is I think the router that they were using to route the inlays was slightly off center this day. But to me, this inlay looks like it's a little bit too high because all these other ones seem to be a little bit lower. But without the straight edge, it almost looks like this one's a little bit lower. But, but it just might be lighting, I'm not sure. But anyways, they're just using the perloid dots. And as far as neck measurements go, the nut width is 1.69 inches. And by the 12th, it's 2.06. I'm imagining this is going to be a pretty thin feeling neck here. So 0.85 at the first. And then by the 12th, I bet it'll stay consistent. Yeah, 0.87. Here's a look at that modern C neck. If you zoom in right there, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. How it just kind of comes to a sharp point right there. And this rocks the usual 25 and a half inch scale length. Moving on to the face of the headstock, it's pretty cool here. So you get a large string tree that keeps everything going down, and then you have a regular string tree right there. Probably just left over once again, kind of like the locking tuners from the stock model. But I love the silver Fender logo. It also reflects the light. And you have Tom Morello's signature right there. It kind of looks like it's a troll. <laughs> So wish me luck getting the original strings back in those locking tuners. Hopefully none of them strip out.
Well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Funny story. A long time ago, if you look up, I think it's a Jackson Dinky on my channel. During my overview of it, I was showing you how the tremolo bar would actually work, and I broke a string, and I was like, oh, man. It's got the uh, Jackson branded Floyd Rose, which works pretty well. That's a floating tremolo, so you can go up and down. Well, it looks like I just broke the string there. That was unfortunate. That was not a planned thing. And when I sold that guitar, I drove up to Fort Wayne to meet a guy at a guitar center. And I'll never forget the way that he strung that. Because I had tried to do like a, a Trace War Beast before and it was like, ah, oh, that was a mess. But I'll never forget how the guy put the ball end up here and it's like, whoa, that was like mind blowing that you could do that on a Floyd Rose system. And to uh, take the string off, all you have to do is use one of the Allen keys that are included. You just undo that and then that just kind of locks that into place with this little block. But luckily only one string broke while trying to redo it. And that's simply just because there wasn't enough room left because of the locking system, it cut the string too short. If I was gonna restring the whole thing, this is the one guitar that I would leave all the excess just hanging out everywhere, because that's what Tom Morello does. So if the playing demo's a little bit out of tune, I'm sorry, but this is as close as I could get it. Which isn't half bad. As far as the back side of the instrument goes, nothing too special here that does not actually have any back plate at all, likely because he left his off. So they just thought, hey, why even bother installing one? But here's what the back of that Floyd Rose system looks like. It kind of just looks like a regular Stratocaster. But you can see the Floyd Rose branding right there on the block. This guitar just looks a little bit chunkier overall because of the top not being carved. But it does have a nice rolled back edge right here. Kind of reminds me of a Telecaster. But you do have Schaller strap lock buttons on here stock. That's a nice little feature. And you just have your regular comfort carve right there that you're used to seeing on a Stratocaster. Still a bolt-on neck, but nothing too fancy there. And the whole body is finished in a gloss polyurethane, but the neck is a satin finish. That's good for players. But it utilizes the skunk stripe because you can actually adjust the truss rod just right there on the front. And back here we can see our serial number, 2020 year model, but it was made in 2019. And here's our Fender branded locking tuners. Properly 100% fully assembled, it weighs 8 pounds, 6.4 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. Yeah! <laughs> 
Now that we know all about Tom Morello's Soul Power Stratocaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? At $12.99, I think they have these things priced appropriately and are actually giving you a really good guitar for the money. I was scared at first too, but now that I've had it in my hands, I can definitely approve this guitar. But then again, you have to remember, I'm literally the target demographic for this guitar, so your results may vary. But once you slap the Soul Power decal on, the whole signature guitar vibe totally takes place. So yeah, I'm sorry I used a bunch of effects in the playing demo. I don't normally do that, but I mean, if you're demoing the Tom Morello Stratocaster, you, you kind of have to use effects. And nobody does it quite the way Tom does. But if you're not a big fan of him, is this guitar still worth it? Maybe. Personally, I would have liked to have been able to choose between a non-Floyded version and this one because I really did not find much of a use for using the Floyd Rose. I had all the other effects and stuff to do that with. I had many different tonal opportunities there. It was basically just a set bridge for me for the most part. I know Tom sometimes does some things with that though. But that was kind of annoying for me because if you switch between Rage Against the Machine and Audio Slave, you're swapping tuning, so sometimes I had to improvise on what I could play. So the pros of this guitar, it feels good to play, as far as the Aerodyne Stratocasters do. I mean, once again, you don't have this comfort carve right here, so it's a little bit different. I'm not a huge fan of the neck profile, but you just kind of learn to live with it and adapt your playing style to it. But it's got so many high-end parts on here. This is not something cheap. So while it is a little bit expensive for a Mexican-made Fender, you gotta remember, it is a signature guitar and they threw a lot of parts on this thing. So it's kind of similar to buying a Mexican Fender and then upgrading absolutely everything that's on it. That's essentially what this guitar is. 
But as far as the negatives here, the bridge pickup steals the show. It's to the point where I don't even care about the other four positions. I just wanted to leave it on the bridge because that is the most fullest rounding sound out of everything. Whenever you swap it to the other settings, it's like you lose so much volume. I actually had to correct that in post so you guys can hear it, you know, semi what level. I'm sure I could adjust the pickup heights, but that's how it came from the factory. So that's something to keep in mind. And pretty much the only other thing I can say about this is it is a fingerprint city guitar. I hate black guitars because they show polishing scratches, they show fingerprints. Add that with a mirror pick guard, this is just a devil of a guitar. I had to constantly polish this thing for the B-roll shots just to make sure there's no loose fingerprints and whatnot. So I had a good time with this guitar. I would recommend it. I mean, if you're not necessarily a Morello fan, you might be able to pick up an Aerodyne Stratocaster a little bit cheaper than this one. But honestly, I think it's specced out so well. I think even a non-Morello fan could enjoy this guitar. So those are my opinions. You can let me know what you guys thought of it in the comment section below. But let's check it out under blacklight before we say goodbye. Oh, so I'd imagine nothing will glow on this thing except for maybe the back of the neck. But you know, it looks like we got a little bit on the front here. But that is a full-on gloss finish here. You also have that full gloss finish on the face of the headstock, but then you switch to that satin. Yep, just like I thought, this one will glow a little bit more. And everything is looking good here. Here's another feature that's nice at this price point. Most of the Mexican Fenders that I've purchased did not have cases. This does have a proper hard shell case. It's labeled Fender, so that's another value added feature, I would say. But you got two locking latches on either side, a little latch in the middle, and a handle. And inside here, I mean, it's a Stratocaster case. What more do you want? <laughs> it's got a black interior and it comes with all this case candy. So three silica packets, a pass certificate for the case, as well as the keys. You also then get the instructions of how to install Soul Power. I think they could have made it a little bit more clearer on which side you're supposed to be taking off though, because I actually messed that up at first. And they give you the Allen keys for the Floyd Rose setup. My only critique is I wish they would have given you a little flathead screwdriver that fits in those knobs because even though I have a bunch of different bits, none of them would fit it. So that means I can't get all the pick guard plastic off, unfortunately, because I can't remove them. And I understand it's a Mexican Fender, but no COA on a signature guitar, that's a little bit of a letdown. A nice little photo of Tom Morello with him saying, yep, this is the guitar, would have been a nice touch, but unfortunately it's not there. So if you think you might be interested in pre-ordering a Tom Morello Soul Power Stratocaster, I can get you another one through my new Guitar Day program. You can check out my website for more details on that, troglisguitarshow.com. So thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.